I struggled with emotional eating most of my life. It started when I was 10 years old. I was going through some emotional traumatic experiences and I started turning to food to help me deal with them. I used to sneak and hide food in my room, wait till everyone was asleep, and then I would eat until I was numb. That got worse and worse the older that I got until it had caused me to gain so much weight. In my late 20s, I weighed 275 pounds and my weight was starting to cause me serious health problems like sleep apnea, so bad that I was stopping breathing seven times a night and partially stopping breathing 84 times a night where I needed a machine to help me breathe at night. And I started looking at myself going, if I don't make changes, I'm not gonna wake up one day. And in that moment, when I realized that, I also realized I was finally ready to deal with my emotional eating. Once I was ready, I started to do some things immediately after emotional eating to help me work through it. And I'm sharing these things, I'm gonna share these things with you guys because I know what it's like to struggle. I'm hoping that these are gonna maybe help you guys, but I'm not a professional. So if you are struggling with emotional eating, please seek professional help. I did, I went through several years of therapy to work through my emotional eating alongside doing th these things because they helped me. But please, you are worth it to seek professional help for emotional eating if you do struggle with it. The first thing that I started doing was try not to hide and try not to panic. So what I would do is, I would panic after emotionally eating and I would try to hide it and actually hide it. I would take all of my wrappers and I would wrap it in paper towels, newspaper, um, whatever, put it Kleenex and then stick it at the bottom of the garbage pails. Or I would specifically go out of my way to like a park or something and put all of the evidence of the food wrappers in a different garbage, trying to hide that it had never happened so that I wouldn't have to deal with it. What I learned in therapy, this is one of the biggest things that I still carry with me, is secrets keep you sick. So anytime that I did that, I was avoiding it and not actually working through it and that wasn't helping me. It was just making things worse. So the first thing I would do is not hide it. I would actually talk it out. And if I didn't feel comfortable talking it out with someone I love, like I would talk it out with Sassy. If you don't have somebody but you like writing, then you know you could journal it. What I did was I would talk it out to my husband Kyle, I call him Sassy, but I would tell him, you know what? I just was emotionally eating and I would talk it out, but I would also write it in a journal. And this is the journal here that I wrote it in and I am actually going to share with you a piece of what a journal entry would look like immediately after I had emotionally eaten, just in case it helps some of you guys. I ate too much tonight. I made myself feel really uncomfortable. I need to tell myself it's okay. I need to be kind to my body and myself. It's okay. I will be okay. I will focus on being kind to my body, myself. I'll try to allow myself to be me, to be mindful and to be in the moment. And so that, you know, those are the things I would just, I would just get it out. I overate. This is what I, I'm going through. And it really helped to get it out and talk it out. And um, it really helped make me feel less guilty about it. And I'm, the more I did it, the less I wanted to hide it. The next thing, don't try to fix it. I used to immediately after panicking and trying to hide it, I would try to overcompensate for it. Meaning I would try to work it off through exercise or I would decide that I wasn't gonna eat anything for the rest of the day to make up for it. Or if I was, you know, had plans to go out for dinner, I would cancel it because I was like punishing myself for the emotional eating. So what I learned to do was don't try to fix it. Go on with the schedule 
um, the way that it was. If I had plans, I would keep them and eat what I was going to eat. I wouldn't, if I didn't have exercise planned, I wouldn't do it. I would go on with my day the way that it would have looked without the emotional eating because any overcompensating, again, just made me want to eat emotionally more and more. It just made it worse. And this wasn't, I was learning, this wasn't about punishing myself. It was about being gentle, realizing that I had issues, but not making myself feel worse for them. It was about trying to help myself through it so that I could prevent it from continuing to happen. And going right back on schedule started helping me. The third thing, not trying to fix it, then I would move on to looking at why did it happen? What was the trigger? What caused me to emotionally eat? Was it for emotional reasons? Like, did I have a bad day? Was there the trauma coming back from my childhood that was causing it because I didn't want to look at it? Um, was I tired? Was I bored? Was I actually hungry? Then I had to go and look at the diet piece. Was I taking away food or eating too low calorie? Was I, you know, doing too much exercise? And there were times where, yes, I had not been eating a balanced diet and I had to look at that. Oh, well, if I eat a balanced diet, then I won't be missing food groups. I might be less likely to overeat. There were also times where I was skipping meals. So when the emotional eating had happened, I had actually been so hungry because I had skipped meals, but I felt bad about wanting to eat because I was hungry and that caused a whole cycle. So if there was something wrong with my diet, I would try to correct it that way. But then if it was emotional, I would work through it by writing um, and journaling and the journaling really helped. Then the next thing, once I knew the why, I would work through it. And again, that was like, once I figured it out, I would try to make a new meal plan if my meal plan needed tweaking, or I would work on the actual emotional piece. And that was, you know, why I started to go to therapy. I use my journal. I started making sure that I included treats because anytime I took them away from my meal plan, it, it would backfire and I would end up doing more emotional eating. So I made sure that I allowed myself to choose foods that I enjoyed while still trying to lose weight because my weight had been causing health issues. So it was about working through and finding a balance between eating what I like to lose weight, but also preventing the emotional eating from going on. And I'll read you a journal entry here. This was Friday, March 7th. I don't have a year here, but I am stuck. I keep eating and sneaking treats each day. I'm afraid of gaining weight and getting sleep apnea again. I am talking so negatively to myself, constantly putting myself down. I'm eating until I'm overstuffed again. I keep trying to fix it by planning to eat good from now on. And I know I need to let go and allow myself to eat the food that I like without the guilt. I need to use food to nourish my body, not to numb it. And I wanted to read that to you. I wanted to read that to you because this was a time when I had taken away treats. I had lost about 100 pounds at this point and I thought I could speed up my weight loss by taking away treats. And all that did was backfire, cause me to emotionally eat and sneak food again. And so I realized to fix it, I had to work through you know, the guilt about the food and then add treats back in so that I could enjoy a balanced diet and continue on my journey of losing the weight and working through the emotional eating. Number five, the last thing that I would do is put a plan in place for if and when the emotional eating would happen again. And my plan looked like this. So I would make up cards that had questions on it. And the questions basically said like, are you actually hungry? Um, because anytime that I was hungry, I mean, sorry, anytime that I would emotionally eat, it was usually not about food. So I would have the questions, are you actually hungry? If you are, then I would put, if yes, find something to eat that you would like. If no, why are you reaching for food? And then 
I would remind myself on the card to journal it, talk it out, try to work through why I was reaching for the food. I would put those cards everywhere that I would go to emotional eat. My car, the kitchen, the fridge, cupboards, my placemat at the kitchen table. And um, that way, any time that I went to reach for food, those would catch my eye because they would be right in the way of the cupboard or the fridge. And it would get me to stop for a moment and think about it. And along with those cards, I would have a list of what to do instead of eating. If, if I wasn't hungry, it was because of emotional reasons, I would do, okay, what can you do instead right now that you enjoy that has nothing to do with food so that eventually you can work through the emotions, but let's do something right now to distract you that you enjoy. And I have an actual list here, and I'll read that to you. So my list said things to do instead of eat. Do my nails. I loved doing my nails and when my nails were wet, it was a lot harder to eat and reach for food. Go for a walk, write. I really like writing and journaling. Play computer games. At the time that was a thing. <laughs> um, talk it out. Play with Hank who was our old dog and read. And so I kept that list with all of the cards. And the other thing that I kept with the cards was a picture of myself as a little girl. And um, I actually have some in the front of my journal, so I'll show you. Um, that's one. And I would put these everywhere with the cards. And here's another one. And um, Kyle's favorite picture because he likes the carrots on the knees. <laughs> but well, every bunny has carrots <laughs> on their knees. Obviously. <laughs> the reason why I did that was because Whenever I would go to reach for food and I wasn't hungry the emo for emotional eating, I was normally doing negative talk in my head. And so I would look at the picture of little Nicole and say, could I say those things to little Nicole or like any little kid or even picturing Kyle as a little boy? Like, could I say those things to a child? I couldn't. So why would I say them to me? And then also, if... I looked at that and I thought, if little Nicole was emotionally eating right now, how would I feel about that? What would I do? And it would get me to think, well, I would try to love her through it. I would try to be really gentle with her and, and say like, it's okay, little Nicole, how can I help you? And then I, it would get me to turn the mirror on adult Nicole and go, well, maybe I should be gentle on adult Nicole. And talk her through it and not put her down and work through why she needs to eat when she's not hungry. And it, it really helped me work through it alongside of therapy. So the friends, I, I really hope that this helps you guys. These things have really helped me and I no longer need to engage in emotional eating. I still get the thoughts sometimes and then I revisit all of these things. Um, I keep this journal because you know, it might help other people, but also it reminds me of how far I've come and that I am worth it to work through it. And so are you guys. And um, I love you guys very much. If you want to know exactly, you know, portions, meals that I ate to lose 130 pounds and keep it off for seven years, my weight loss ebook links are down below, along with the HTLT SUPS. Use code Nicole. The link is down there. Use code Nicole to save yourself 10%. You can also sub so you don't miss any content and check out more videos for fun weight loss tips. And I do have lots of videos on how I work through my emotional eating on my channel as well. I love you guys. I hope this helps you. Catch you in the next one. Peace, cuties. Got to end with you. See ya. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> nice slippers. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do